Welcome to the Faith and Happiness Playground. I am your host, Elle Edwards, mental health champion, positive psychology geek, and founder of the Faith and Happiness Playground. And I'm really excited that you're back for this episode. I would like to quickly remind you a quick housekeeping tip at the time of launching this episode. It is Black Friday week. Well, no, it's not strictly true. It's Thanksgiving week in, the, in America, which means it's Black Friday on Friday. And we do have a, a special promotion between now and the end of December. You can join the Faith and Happiness Playground, take advantage of the weekly group coaching calls at no extra cost. So if you're somebody who loves the podcast, if you're a Christian who would love to smile more and, and get the benefit of being around this place, I would encourage you to join now rather than after Christmas because you'll actually get more value for money that way. Go to faithandhappinessplayground.com forward slash join. So with that quick housekeeping announcement over with, and I make no apology for the fact I will repeat myself this week in regards to that offer because I don't want you to miss out. But with that said, with it over and done with, let's get on with today's episode. Because in this episode of the podcast, I have a little story for you about toothpaste. So you might remember last week, I told you that God had called me to tweak the format of the podcast a little bit, sharing stories and behind the scenes bits and bobs as they have relevance to you and happiness and within a Bible friendly context. It goes without saying really, but I'm just going to say it. I'm not going to just randomly tell you a story about the time that I bought a new pair of shoes, for example. <laughs> that would be a bit pointless, unless, of course, they were like super holy shoes. But um, <laughs> anyway, today's story. So a few days ago, I was. It was early in the morning. I I do get up quite early, uh, so I'd got up and I was getting ready to get in the shower, and I was all set to clean my teeth. And I picked up my toothbrush, and then I picked up and was about to squeeze onto my toothbrush face wash. Now, thankfully, the face wash bottle is kind of bigger and chunkier than a tube of toothpaste. So I didn't go as far as actually squeezing <laughs> face wash onto my toothbrush. Can you imagine if I'd gone even a step further and actually started cleaning my teeth with soap? Ugh, that would have been disgusting. However, this, this momentary change in the shape of the bottle, it interrupted my thought process. Because let's be honest, Cleaning our teeth is one of those fairly automatic, same old, same old, going with the flow things. And it's really easy to slip into that automatic doing it without thinking mode, which is what I was doing. It was still early. I hadn't had any coffee. But thankfully, the shape of the bottle interrupted my thinking and caught me quickly before I cleaned my teeth with soap. However, this got me thinking about the concept of pattern interrupt. It's that thing that you go through the day and all of a sudden something happens that's maybe slightly different to normal and it grabs your attention and jolts you for a moment out of that ordinariness. Tony Robbins is quite famous for doing it when he does interventions with people and he he comes across as, I mean, I've never met the guy, I should just say. He comes across as quite sort of nicely spoken. All of a sudden, he'll throw in a quick F-bomb, and it jolts people out of their, out of their line of thinking and pattern interrupt. It stops them and, ah, oh, like this. Now, I actually, my husband did this without realizing that it's actually a psychological thing with his work colleagues a few weeks or months ago. They're in the office, and uh, they do a lot of sitting, as you can imagine, in an office environment. And all of a sudden, right, come on, everybody. And he grabbed them all, not literally. He dragged them all outside. Again, not literally. But he interrupted what was doing. He had them up out of their environment, outside. They went for a walk and then came back. And they were, they were invigorated and refreshed. And afterwards, when I told him about this concept of pattern interrupt, he thought it was quite interesting. But I got to wondering about how this works within the context of our day-to-day -day life and within the context of our week. Because it's really easy. Life tends to be same old, same old week. One day, you know, if it's Monday to Friday, we get up, we maybe get the kids up, we get off to school, we go to work, blah, 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 blah. Even someone like me who works from home, every day is, I mean, I'll be honest, every day isn't the same. Some days are different. On Wednesdays, for example, I go to Body Blast. But in terms of the day-to-day -day things that I do, they're pretty much the same. And I'm not sorry for that. I, I love what I do. I love that I get to record this, for example, and share this with you. Not me complaining, but it's just recognizing the fact that life, you know, ebbs and flows, good moments, bad moments, but generally speaking, it's quite level and content. And that's fine, but sometimes we need a bit of a pattern interrupt to be jolted out of our out of our same old, same old, you know, interrupting where we're at. It's why when we have those, those mountaintop experiences, 
probably figuratively speaking, I haven't been on a mountain literally recently, but we have those moments where God just stops us. And, oh. So for example, you might be outside and all of a sudden you see this glorious blue, uh, oranges and pinks in the sky. As I say, blues across the sky, the sky is always blue. <laughs> well, apart from looking out the window, apart from when it's gray and dreary, like it is here right now today. But generally speaking, the sky is either gray or blue. But then we get the sun and the way it interacts at sort of sunset and sunrise. And we get these pinks and these oranges and it's just glorious. And you might go, oh, some days you won't notice it. But some days it makes you stop and go, oh, it interrupts your thinking. It's like God suddenly waving, go, woohoo, hello, pattern interrupt. And then, of course, I went looking for a biblical example of this. And I found a blog post that suggested that Sunday, the Sabbath, Sunday for us, Saturday for, for our Jewish friends, but the Sabbath, this idea of having a day of rest, is actually God instituting a pattern interrupt every single week, an opportunity for you to pause and reset. And I have, of course, so therefore got a Bible verse for you. This is from Hebrews chapter four, and it's verses nine and 10. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works just as God did from his. And it's that reminder, of course, as well, because we tend to get quite busy. Now, I am very much anti-hustle, hashtag anti-hustle. <laughs> I really can't stand it and grinding and oh, I'm pushing and shoving. And I got to be quite honest, as somebody who likes to get stuff done, I do have to guard against this. There is this temptation to think, okay, right, let's get up early and do all of the things and go, 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 go. And that's fine sometimes for a season, we need to remember, of course, that actually God is in and around and through all of that stuff. And so this idea of powering through, it's not particularly helpful. It's not particularly healthful either, helpful or healthful. It's also not the way that God designed us to operate. There are going to be times where you do have to knuckle down and just do it. Even somebody who loves to help you smile has to acknowledge that sometimes we do things because we have to. For example, I don't particularly enjoy hoovering up wood shavings from the rabbits. If you listen along every single episode, you will have heard me mention this before. It's one of my least favorite things to do. The, the wood shavings have the ability to clog up the hoover, and so I end up having to take the end off and shove the other bit in, and oh, it's a right pain in the bum. But I do it, I mean, sometimes I do, you know, coerce my daughter, whose rabbits they are, to help out, and she does. Sometimes my husband does it as well, of course. Because I'm the one for whom the wood shavings do seem to be the biggest problem. It falls to me to hoover up. Because I, at the end of the day, my, I maintain that if you're going to moan about something, there's no good moaning about it if you're not going to do anything about it. My husband doesn't like the fact that some of our skirted boards are a bit dirty. I never even notice. So my argument is, if it bothers you, do something about it. <laughs> so there are things sometimes that we do, though, just because we have to. I feel compelled to remind you, of course, as well, that language around have to and should. You can tweak it by making a choice. I can empower myself by telling me that actually I'm choosing to hoover up the wood shavings because I like it when it's done. But all of that said, there are some things that we just have to suck up and do it. Even as someone who loves making you smile, I have to acknowledge that that is the reality of day-to-day -day life. However, you don't have to be going and grinding all of the time. But we do tend to be busy people. And there is this temptation to go, 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 go. But you know what? God knows what we're like. And so he instigates from the very beginning. He institutes that Sabbath. And so he is our ultimate example. Because if he chose to have a Sabbath, I was going to say needed to have a Sabbath. But he chose to have that day of rest. He did six days and then he rested. So who are we to say, oh, no, no, we don't need to rest? Just putting that out there. So that's that example of that pan interrupt in every single week. That reminder that you can slow down and pause, take time with family, take extra time with God, just to reflect on the week ending and get ready for that brand new week. So I want to encourage you today, a couple of things really, reminding you that, that this anti-hustle piece, 100 miles an hour, go, 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 go. Life happens fast. Life moves very, very fast. So if you're somebody, if you feel like, you know, you're doing all of the things and you've kind of maybe lost sense of who you are and what it is to be you, the Faith and Happiness Playground sounds like a really good fit for you. I'm just saying. We have the UEA Games, UEA by Design, rather, rather than life accidentally happening, choosing to show up and consciously designing that life that God created you to live. And that's key, that you are you. 
I am here to encourage you to be you, yeah, full to the top with God's love, fully self-expressed. So there's that piece of it. I would encourage you, if it sounds like something that would be a good fit, go to faithandhappinessplayground.com forward slash join to find out more and join us. And remember the special offer. Come and join us now because you can take advantage of, the, of the, the group coaching calls every single Friday between now and the end of the year. The other piece of this as well is I want to encourage you to start thinking about how you can use this idea of pattern interrupt in your day-to-day -day life. If you know that you are somebody who does tend to get busy and plodding, you know, you can start to consider how can you build this idea of pattern interrupt into your day-to-day -day life. If you don't know the answer, ask God because he knows. Sit with him and go, you know, are there, ask God direct, directly, are there areas of my life where I need to be reminded to interrupt the patterns, to change my thinking, to pause and reflect? He will tell you, he loves you. He wants to help you to create and live and design a life that helps you smile. There is that ulterior motive from my perspective, because I think that the more Christians we have full to the top with God's love, smiling and being joyful examples of God's love out in the world, the better and bigger impact that will be just saying but it also makes your life happier as well it's like a win-win scenario feels like a perfect thing to me anyway thank you for being here give it a go for yourself let me know how you get on and i shall be back tomorrow take care Bye bye